Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Winecast. So it's confession time again, and this confession is that I'm absolutely swamped. And I mean swamped. I've got all kinds of crazy heading at me from every direction, including an upcoming camping trip that's going to see me away from civilization and technology for three days, and then back just in time to head to my first round of WSET 3 classes this weekend. And all of this has put a serious dent in my ability to research and put together the cast that I want to do on Nebbiolo and the Piedmont. So those, I'm afraid, are just going to have to wait a little while, though they still remain my top priorities. But I also didn't want to let a week go by without posting some content, and I hit upon a solution to my dilemma when I realized that I could throw together a really quick cast, but one that still has some integrity, on some of the wine-related sites on the web that I like to spend time on and that I wish more people knew about. A cast like this is also a nice way that I can plug some sites that have really made a big difference for me as I've learned about wine, and in a small way, return the favors that they've done for me by posting such terrific content. So without further ado, here's a quick tour of five sites that I spend a lot of time at and can't get enough of. And the first one that we can start with is The Wine Economist, curated by Mike Vseth, an emeritus professor of economics at the University of Puget Sound here in Washington. I really love this site because I think that the economic side of wine is something that gets the short shrift in wine education. Yeah, wine is grapes and history and culture and laws and techniques, but it's also a business, and anyone who's serious about wine, who ignores that fact, does so at their own risk. Vseth knows wine well and economics even better, and he's also a compelling and clear writer, and I try not to miss a post because he does a great job of shining a light on issues in the wine world that even professionals don't always think about, and I think I've learned something from just about everything he's written. So when you're ready to check out what he's got to say, head over to wineeconomist.com, yep, that's two E's in there, and have a look around. So, as much as I love wine economics, if there's one thing I'm more interested in than that, it's wine statistics and data. Yep, that's just the kind of fellow that I am. And when I want my weekly fix of that, I type and click my way over to the Wine Gourd, curated by David Morrison out of Uppsala, Sweden. Morrison has a background in statistics and data analysis, and he started this blog a little over a year ago to bring some serious mathematical chops to interpreting all of the data that the wine world just seems to love generating. Though it's a young site, he's managed to post at least one article per week over its lifespan, so there's a lot to check out. And the site is regularly updated, and one of my favorite Monday things to do is to see what the latest article is about. What are his articles about? Just about everything number-related, from the ever-increasing price of Napa Valley Cabernet to just about every issue imaginable connected to the dubious practice of rating wines on a point scale. This is actually probably my favorite site that I visit regularly. And if you're ready to start thinking in a serious way about numbers and what they mean to wine, you're going to really want to check this site out. So when you're up for it, head over to winegourd.blogspot.com. If you've been following my cast for a while, hopefully you've noticed that I have an interest in wine science and that I don't think that the science behind viticulture and winemaking gets even close to enough play in wine ed as it deserves. And my biggest inspiration for trying to get more of the word out on wine science has been Jamie Good and his terrific site, WineAnorak.com. If you're curious, Wine Anorak is a sort of cobbled together expression that means something like a wine nerd or a wine geek, and that's exactly the sensibility that Good brings to a site with article after article on wine and the science behind it, in addition to some great reviews, tastings, and pieces on wine news. Like the curators of the previous two sites, Jamie Good is highly trained in the field he covers, and he's a good accessible writer, and when I'm working on a wine science related cast, this is usually the first place I check to get my bearings. So when you're all set to check this site out, head to wineanorak.com and dive right in. This next site's a little bit different than the previous site since, as far as I can tell, it isn't regularly updated. But what is there is out of this world helpful, at least if you're interested in wine chemistry. Andrew Waterhouse of UC Davis's Enology program curates a site for Waterhouse Lab at Davis that has a specific page on it that's called What's in Wine, and it's simultaneously one of the most thorough yet accessible accounts of the various compounds and chemicals that make up a glass of wine that I've ever found. If wine anorak is where I start when I want to learn more about wine chemistry, then what's in wine is where I go to check that my understanding is solid. I get that not every wine drinker in the world, or even most of them, cares what glycerol is, but I do, and this site helps me put those cares to bed. So when your curiosity about anthocyanins finally gets the better of you, head over to 
waterhouse.ucdavis.edu forward slash what's in wine. And last, and maybe most heartbreakingly of all, because it's not currently being updated, is what probably would be my favorite site if it were, Fringe Wine. Rob Tabot, the site's creator, has a powerful post on his homepage about his reasons for no longer posting, and I wish him Godspeed as he deals with the various issues that he discusses. But what he achieved before he stopped was remarkable. A huge archive of posts on the three topics his blog covers, unusual grapes, unusual settings for mainstream or international grapes, and unusual styles or variations on traditional styles of winemaking. His posts are thorough, and he's a relentless researcher who doesn't stop until he gets to the bottom of a question or grape-related mystery. And he was especially amazing at posting the most current research on grape genetics. While I hope he someday comes back and writes new posts, I'm still plumbing the depths of what he has to offer. So please check out his site at fringewine.blogspot.com. Well, that's it. Five sites where I spend most of my wine-related time when I'm online. None of them are really introductory sites to wine, and there are a lot of great sites for that purpose out there, but I wanted this to represent sites that I genuinely spend a lot of time at and sites that I genuinely groove on. So how about all of you? Where do you hang out on the wine interwebs? I'd really love to hear some of your recommendations, so please leave them in the comments along with, I hope, a like and a subscription if you haven't already gone down that route. Thanks for joining me for this brief cast, and I should be back in regular form soon, laying down some righteous knowledge about the grape. I'm your host, the Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.